Hey everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. Got another nice cream puff to bring you this week, folks. A 2003 Buick LeSabre Celebration Edition. A lot of you might say, what the heck's a Celebration Edition? And what makes this a Celebration Edition? And what are we celebrating? I'll inform you of that in just a little while. Uh, but I want to show off this beautiful one-owner, 59,000-mile example of what I think was one of Buick's last really good, well-built, quality-made, durable front-wheel drive sedans. Uh, the second to this would be the Park Avenue. I really enjoy those as well, the same vintage. And I kind of think after the, those two cars uh, ceased production in 2005, I kind of think the brand kind of lost a lot of its loyal, uh, you know, buyers, really. Um, and I don't think Buick really cared, to be honest with you, because that was one of the reasons why they were doing that. They wanted to not be known as Grandpa and Grandmama's car anymore. So, they did away with their traditional, you know, classy Buick, uh, you know, features and, and looks and stuff like that. The traditional sedan. And now they sell all these crappy looking suvs because that's what everybody wants these days apparently <laughs> anyways this is a one owner example this body style buick i believe ran from 2000 all the way up until 2005 uh and it really it was a favorite car you saw these things everywhere and you still today actually see a lot of these out on the road which is kind of nice knowing they made that much of an impact but uh I'm gonna go around this car, show you some of the features, some of the things that uh, I can show you on it, and explain about that Celebration Edition, uh, which Buick uh, unveiled in 2003 for this car. So beautiful red, crimson red paint, um, a very nice painted pinstripe that somebody did. Uh, actually, the stripe somewhere over here. This is the signature of the striper. Usually they do that when they paint the stripe on like that. Uh, beautiful car, bumper's in really nice shape. No scuffs or dings on the bumper. Uh, all the chrome on the license plates around is in really nice shape. The tail lights are nice and clear and bright. Come around to the side here. Beautiful 16 inch chrome wheels. Those are factory Buick wheels. Four brand new white wall tires, you know me. Uh, one of the things that I did notice on this car is all four wheels a little bit of corrosion just starting in some of the pockets. You got a little bit of a ding right there. It's kind of an odd place for a door ding. Don't know how that happens. A little bit of a chip in the paint right there. And I believe actually, yep, right here and right here as well. Uh, but really beautiful paint on this car. Mira is all in nice shape couple very very minor chips or well, rub marks we'll say on the uh the uh, belt side molding there another nice 16 inch chrome wheel beautiful white wall and again you can see just a few little spots just starting to corrode in the wheel pockets this car was a virginia car so it's very rust free i don't know how that would happen but it's there in that beautiful pinstripe, very smooth. This car is absolutely beautifully smooth. Glass is in really nice shape. You can see here, and a lot of people might not know what this is, this is a heads up display. A uh, really cool thing that GM put in these cars back in the day that is actually kind of making a comeback today. Uh, but I think GM was one of the first to put that in the cars. Come down that beautiful red hood. Front bumper is in really nice shape as well. Nice and bright, the headlights are nice and bright. You can see the beautiful grill. One of the things I did notice, and it's kind of odd, see that little chip out of this corner light? I don't know if someone tried replacing the bulb at one point and maybe chipped it. Uh, that's the only thing I can really think of. Again, on this side, glass is in really nice shape. Wipers. Come over to this wheel. This wheel, I think, was one of the, the nicer wheels. <coughs> but still has a few little spots in the pockets. Uh, brand new white wall tire. Come down the side of this one. Does have, 
cast my shadow over it you can see it a little better a little scratch in the mirror housing there really nice going down the side of this car i think there was a little bit of a ding or an imperfection somewhere having a hard time seeing it maybe right there i'm not sure <laughs> Uh, I know that I thought there was a ding somewhere. Now the chrome 16-inch uh, alloy wheel. Come around to the back side over here. We'll come up over the back. Still has the original uh, OnStar antenna. Kind of useless today, but original to the car. So one of the things you might say, okay, what's the celebration edition? Now, uh, what consists of the package? I'll show you the stuff on the outside. These chrome wheels were specific to the chrome, uh, celebration package. The Limiteds had those wheels in a base like alloy wheel. Uh, another difference with the celebration edition is you can see the badging here. It doesn't have the tri-colored shield. It's blacked out in the back, a little bit of wax buildup. Sorry about that. So that one's like that. Come around to the front. Front is just the same. And then this is blacked out where it would normally be chrome. Uh, that's another celebration trait. The color itself is a celebration package. Uh, these were available in this red. I believe the white. And I want to say the light bronze mist was available for the celebration edition as, as well. Uh, another cool thing that they have in the brochure is the signal mirrors, which is probably impossible to see right now. Come around to the back. I believe the last thing that they had, which is very minor, is this license plate pocket is blacked out where I believe the originals, it's one of those things you don't really notice. I think the original were like a gray shade. Um, LeSabre in 2003, I believe they, 03 was when they, they must be. <laughs> what am I talking about? 03, they put just one badge on these cars where 2000, 2001, and 2002, they had one on each quarter panel on each side saying LeSabre Limited, or I believe Custom. Uh, they saved one emblem per car and put it right on the uh, quarter there. I'm gonna show you some of the differences on the interior as well for the Celebration Edition. Uh, the Celebration Edition shows more on the inside with the interior and stuff like that. So let's take a look at the inside of this beautiful... All right, let's take a look at the inside of this beautiful 2003 Buick LeSabre. Uh, I haven't said it in a while, but in the bottom right hand corner, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I guess I didn't realize I used to always plug my channel at this time. Uh, so if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, definitely hit that bell notification at the same time uh, if you want to get updates on upcoming inventory. You can see here, beautiful two-tone leather interior they put in these cars. Really nice. This is uh, part of the celebration package as well. You can see the Buick uh, shield here, actually in the back seats as well. Uh, but the two-tone, uh, kind of like a shale color and maybe like a, I don't know, medium parchment, we'll say. Uh, two-tone interior. And then this is like a darker wood trim uh, where the other ones have like more of a woody look. Woody look, I don't know if that's a technical term or not. Uh, but that's all specific to the Celebration Edition. You can see inside all the jams are in nice shape. Uh, you have dual power seats with the power lumbar adjustment, uh, memory seats, uh, you know, window switches, all that stuff. The trunk opener on the side here, headlights, heads up display as well. Beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel, all the controls on it. I'll show you those in a minute. back here just as clean as the front nice shiny door jams rear deck is in nice shape and then here are those Buick uh, shields tri shields they call them carpeting is really nice and clean freshly shampooed uh, but you can see that two-tone treatment followed it in the back here as well and what was kind of nice is they had Nice little organizer tray and cup holder in the center armrest of these as well. Come around to the passenger side here. We'll open this up. Again, nice and clean inside the door jams. Sorry about the cars behind me. I've been having a tough time today. 
trying to find shade to do the interior of this car. You can see beautiful leather interior, carpeting, nice and clean. I'll grab this out, I want to show you this after. Inside this gym, very clean. Beautiful, I like this dark wood, this is really nice. And it has the climate control function, well, it must have to be on, but dual zone climate control. Passenger seat is nice and clean. Power as well. What's weird is they have the, the power adjustable, but they have a manual lumbar wheel on this side where they had a power on the other side. Go figure. All right, I'm going to pop the trunk, pop the hood as well, and I'm going to show you what uh, the inside, what I have in this folder here uh, for documentation on this car. Under the hood, you're going to see GM, one of GM's best engines ever produced, the tried and true 3.8 liter. This is a Series 2 V6. Uh, really a great engine they put in these cars. And this car, especially just with the service history I have on the history report, this has been a really well maintained car. You can see here, even you know, these are very common for the intakes to start leaking, valve covers to start leaking. Look how clean this is. This is a really nice car, really clean, really well kept, uh, you know, maintenance wise. And I'm going to show you some of that maintenance history I have uh, in just a minute because I have two announcements to make on this car. One of them I can tell you right now, if you don't like red, this is not the car, this is not the car for you because uh, this car is just very, very red. Uh, crimson metallic or crimson pearl, I think they called it. Uh, I have some floor mats. This is a weird floor mat situation. I think at some point someone may have thrown away the driver's side front floor mat. Because also with the Celebration Edition, you get the floor mats with the uh, Buick insignia on it. So I have the two rears here. That's the passenger side. And then I had one of these in the trunk and one of these, uh, you can see here, in the, uh, in the car. But they're universal floor mats. So you think these are like crappy off name brand floor mats and they probably are a GM put part numbers on them and put their tag on them so I'm assuming at some point uh, whoever owned this car you know may have accidentally uh, damaged the driver's side mat and uh, went to the GM dealership and that's all they had to sell them 59,600 miles on this car. And like I said before, you can see all the beautiful leather wrapped wheel, uh, the uh, buttons on the steering wheel to control your temperature, your volume, your cruise controls down here. Uh, really cool layout of the dashboard on this car. And uh, all the gauges are very easily read. It has the gauge package so you can scroll through and get all your, like, your fuel economy and stuff like that through some of those uh, buttons there. Heads up display is probably gonna be hard to see. Uh, yeah, you can see it, it's not really flashing, it's the LEDs again. Uh, I don't know if I get further away if it stops, but in real life it's not really doing that. <laughs> I know I've explained that a million times, but a lot of people still say it in the comments, oh, your dashboard is flashing. But let's take this Buick for a spin. head back to the shop and I have the second announcement to make to you about this car and show you what's inside that envelope there. You can see here how responsive it is. Shifts beautifully through the gears. Rides wonderfully down the road. Just a really nice driving car. You know, really clean, well kept. Perfect example of a mom and pop Buick. I appreciate everybody for tuning into this one. This is a uh, kind of a unique car for me to get at this time. It's, it's, it actually means a lot to me to have this car. Um, 
kind of a weird way, and I'll explain that to you. That's that's not the other announcement I had to make, but um, ironically, three years ago in March when I moved into my building, the first car that I sold out of my building was a red 2003 Buick LeSabre Celebration Edition, just like this one. It was a one-owner California car with 26,000 miles on it, and I put white walls on it, just like I did with this car, just as nice as this car was. And I remember when I signed my lease three years ago, you know, that car, uh, you know, that was the first one that I sold out of my building. And, you know, it was kind of daunting to, you know, sign a lease for three years and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to marry this and I'm going to I'm going to follow this through. Uh, but that red Buick is I sold that Buick so quickly. I sold it to a lady up in Maine. Uh, that's kind of before I, I was really doing the YouTube thing. Uh, so there's no video about it. I had a lot of cars that I did pre-YouTube. Um, but that that was like my first sale. And, you know, it always stuck with me like, you know, okay, I can do this. Um, I can do this on my own and not have to work for somebody and I can make this work. And here it is three years later, almost to the day I signed my lease. My lease just renewed. Um, I bought an almost identical car aside from miles, really. Uh, and this was uh, kind of cool to have it at the, you know, same time as when I had my other car, uh, you know, three years ago. Uh, you know, here I am just as successful and moving along with my business. So we're going to pull into the shop here and I'm going to show you a few things that I got going for this car. And we'll wrap the video up after that. This is an original 2003 Buick LeSabre. Uh, this is the dealer brochure that they would have passed out at the Buick dealership. And there you can see that beautiful celebration edition. Uh, just really very, very a vibrant car. Shouts classic Buick. Uh, but this is a really cool uh, brochure here. You can see there that crimson red pearl. Uh, and that's the LeSabre uh, celebration edition only chrome wheel, which is really nice to have. Interior swabs, different trim packages and stuff like that. Uh, so this is kind of cool. This was available to the public, um, you know, if you went into the Buick dealership. This is what's really neat that uh, I found this with this car. This is um, a sales consultant's reference guide. How they got this, I have no idea. But this is um, this is basically the, the card that I don't think they gave these out. Uh, these were used by the salesman to kind of sell these cars when they were new and show you what the differences were and to, probably to upsell you into the celebration. Uh, but the celebration edition, basically, as it states out here, uh, is the first ve uh, the LeSabre celebration edition is the first vehicle introduced to commemorate Buick's centennial year and is also to celebrate Buick LeSabre's decade long leadership as the best selling car in its class. Uh, so they have, and then they go through and show you kind of like the special features and stuff like that. Um, but this is uh, this is kind of cool that this car came with this, um, which I don't think was available to the public. I, I really don't. I've never seen something like this, but it just shows you how well documented, you know, <laughs> this car was, you know, back then, you know, Buick was really trying to push these things. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I do have, I usually show you this in the video normally. Uh, these are all the keys that I have with it, two original keys, the uh, two fobs valet key, but it's also kind of cool. It has the original Browns Buick Isuzu uh, keychains. And the last bit of information that I want to share with this car, uh, just to be completely upfront and honest, uh, is how I have the title here. So this is a one owner car. I have the original title from the Commonwealth of Virginia. You can see here the date that it was issued, the actual mileage reading on this 2003 Buick. So this is a sign to me. Where I acquired this car from, this car came from an auction. The car was donated to a charity, not donated to me. I still paid for this car, but the car was donated to a charity. I bought the car from the charity. Unfortunately, when this car was sold through the charity, I don't know if they were having a bad day or they were lazy that day. They never got an odometer reading on this car and they sold it to me with 720 miles. And then they checked the odometer reading as not actual mileage, which is obvious. 
because that reflects the actual mileage that this car was bought brand new with. So what they did, instead of actually going out to get the odometer reading, they wrote 720 because that was up on the top there and they know it had to have at least that. Then auction dealer services essentially sold the car to me, specialty motor cars, and the same exact thing they did here, 720 mileage, miles, and the odometer is not actual miles. That's what they checked there. I have this here just to protect the name of the original owner. Now, obviously, we know the car uh, doesn't have 720 miles. The car is backed up by Carfax. And I'm going to show you a clip of that just to show you how well documented the mileage is on this car. So that's the Carfax documenting all the mileage increments and readings on that car. Uh, it was always dealer serviced. Uh, so I just want to pass that along as information. Um, it won't be an issue registering this car in any state. Some states are mileage exempt after 10 years, so uh, it won't even come in question. But what I'm going to sell the car with is the title. Uh, I'm going to reassign it to the next buyer with actual mileage being read, 59,600 and change. Um, and then a official New Hampshire affidavit of a odometer disclosure will include with that. Uh, so you should have no issues at all. Um, it's not something I can correct. Uh, normally it would be easy to fix that with a, like a letter of correction. Uh, unfortunately the auction that I bought the car from won't do anything to help me with that. Uh, not uncommon to see that. Uh, anyways, I appreciate everybody for tuning in to my videos all the time. Uh, last week, I got a, a whole bunch of cars up for sale. Uh, this week, I got this Buick coming up or posting. Uh, this red Cadillac interior belongs to the white 93 Fleetwood. I've been driving this car. It's got 43,000 miles on it, and it's an absolute dream to drive. Uh, this will be next up on the block. So tune in for the next one. I appreciate all the support and love. Uh, got some real nice pieces coming in uh, on consignment. Um, and I got a nice low mileage Cadillac Eldorado. I'll throw in there. I'm working on buying a few 1992 Bromes uh, that I have coming in uh, this week and next week. Uh, Lincoln Mark 8 Collector's Edition coming in with 20,000 miles. Uh, so I got some really nice stuff coming up for the spring here. Very excited to bring it to you. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you on the next one.